Ruth, Chapter 1 In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech, his wife's name Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malan and Kilian. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about ten years, both Malan and Kilian also died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. When she heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, Naomi and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show kindness to you, as you have shown to your dead and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud, and said to her, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has gone out against me. At this, they wept again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if anything but death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them, and the women exclaimed, Can this be Naomi? Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. Chapter 26 Then Agrippa said to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. So Paul motioned with his hand and began his defense. King Agrippa, I consider myself fortunate to stand before you today as I make my defense against all the accusations of the Jews, and especially so because you are well acquainted with all the Jewish customs and controversies. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. The Jews all know the way I have lived ever since I was a child from the beginning of my life in my own country, and also in Jerusalem. They have known me for a long time, and can testify, if they are willing, that according to the strictest sect of our religion, I lived as a Pharisee. And now, it is because of my hope in what God has promised our fathers that I am on trial today. This is the promise our twelve tribes are hoping to see fulfilled, as they earnestly serve God day and night. O oh, king, it is because of this hope that the Jews are accusing me. Why should any of you consider it incredible that God raises the dead? I, too, was convinced that I ought to do all that was possible to oppose the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And that is just what I did in Jerusalem. On the authority of the chief priests, I put many of the saints in prison. And when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. Many a time I went from one synagogue to another to have them punished. 
and I tried to force them to blaspheme. In my obsession against them, I even went to foreign cities to persecute them. On one of these journeys, I was going to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. About noon, O king, as I was on the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, blazing around me and my companions. We all fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Then I asked, Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. The Lord replied, Now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen of me and what I will show you. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So then, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven, first to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and to the Gentiles also, I preached that they should repent and turn to God and prove their repentance by their deeds. That is why the Jews seized me in the temple courts and tried to kill me. But I have had God's help to this very day, and so I stand here and testify to small and great alike. I am saying nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses said would happen, that the Christ would suffer and, as the first to rise from the dead, would proclaim light to his own people and to the Gentiles. At this point, Festus interrupted Paul's defense. You are out of your mind, Paul, he shouted. Your great learning is driving you insane. I am not insane, most excellent Festus, Paul replied. What I am saying is true and reasonable. The king is familiar with these things, and I can speak freely to him. I am convinced that none of this has escaped his notice, because it was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do. Then Agrippa said to Paul, Do you think that in such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? Paul replied, Short time or long. I pray God that not only you, but all who are listening to me today may become what I am, except for these chains. The king rose, and with him the governor and Bernice, and those sitting with them. They left the room, and while talking with one another, they said, This man is not doing anything that deserves death or imprisonment. Agrippa said to Festus, This man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. Chapter 36 in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Take a scroll and write on it all the words I have spoken to you concerning Israel, Judah, and all the other nations from the time I began speaking to you in the reign of Josiah till now. Perhaps when the people of Judah hear about every disaster I plan to inflict on them, each of them will turn from his wicked way. Then I will forgive their wickedness and their sin. So Jeremiah called Barak, son of Neriah, and while Jeremiah dictated all the words the Lord had spoken to him, Barak wrote them on the scroll. Then Jeremiah told Barak, I am restricted. I cannot go to the Lord's temple. So you go to the house of the Lord on a day of fasting and read to the people from the scroll the words of the Lord that you wrote as I dictated. Read them to all the people of Judah who come in from their towns. Perhaps they will bring their petition before the Lord each will turn from his wicked ways, for the anger and wrath pronounced against this people by the Lord are great. Barak, son of Neriah, did everything Jeremiah the prophet told him to do. At the Lord's temple, he read the words of the Lord from the scroll. In the ninth month of the fifth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, a time of fasting before the Lord was proclaimed for all the people in Jerusalem and those who had come from the towns of Judah. From the room of Jemariah, son of Shaphan the secretary, which was in the upper courtyard at the entrance of the new gate of the temple, Barak read to all the people at the Lord's temple the words of Jeremiah from the scroll. 
When Micaiah, son of Jemariah, the son of Shaphan, heard all the words of the Lord from the scroll, he went down to the secretary's room in the royal palace, where all the officials were sitting, Elishama the secretary, Deleah, son of Shemaiah, Elnathan, son of Akbor, Jemariah, son of Shaphan, Zedekiah, son of Hananiah, and all the other officials. After Micaiah told them everything he had heard Barak read to the people from the scroll, all the officials sent Jehudi, son of Nethaniah, the son of Shalamiah, the son of Cushi, to say to Barak, Bring the scroll from which you have read to the people and come. So Barak, son of Neriah, went to them with the scroll in his hand. They said to him, Sit down, please, and read it to us. So Barak read it to them. When they heard all these words, they looked at each other in fear and said to Barak, We must report all these words to the king. Then they asked Barak, Tell us, how did you come to write all this? Did Jeremiah dictate it? Yes, Barak replied. He dictated all these words to me, and I wrote them in ink on the scroll. Then the officials said to Barak, You and Jeremiah go and hide. Don't let anyone know where you are. After they put the scroll in the room of Elishima the secretary, they went to the king in the courtyard and reported everything to him. The king sent Jehudi to get the scroll. And Jehudi brought it from the room of Elishima the secretary and read it to the king and all the officials standing beside him. It was the ninth month, and the king was sitting in the winter apartment with a fire burning in the fire pot in front of him. Whenever Jehudi had read three or four columns of the scroll, the king cut them off with a scribe's knife and threw them into the fire pot until the entire scroll was burned in the fire. The king and all his attendants who heard all these words showed no fear, nor did they tear their clothes. Even though Elnathan, Deleah, and Jemariah urged the king not to burn the scroll, he would not listen to them. Instead, the king commanded Jeramiel, a son of the king, Saraiah, son of Azrael, and Shelemiah, son of Abdiel, to arrest Barak the scribe and Jeremiah the prophet. But the Lord had hidden them. After the king burned the scroll containing the words that Barak had written at Jeremiah's dictation, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Take another scroll and write on it all the words that were on the first scroll, which Jehoiakim, king of Judah, burned up. Also tell Jehoiakim, king of Judah, this is what the Lord says. You burned that scroll and said, Why did you write on that that the king of Babylon would certainly come and destroy this land and cut off both men and animals from it? Therefore, this is what the Lord says about Jehoiakim, king of Judah. He will have no one to sit on the throne of David. His body will be thrown out and exposed to the heat by day and the frost by night. I will punish him and his children and his attendants for their wickedness. I will bring on them and those living in Jerusalem and the people of Judah every disaster I pronounced against them because they have not listened. So Jeremiah took another scroll and gave it to the scribe Barak, son of Neriah. And as Jeremiah dictated, Barak wrote on it all the words of the scroll that Jehoiakim, king of Judah, had burned in the fire. And many similar words were added to them. Chapter 45 This is what Jeremiah the prophet told Barak, son of Neriah, in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah. After Barak had written on a scroll the words Jeremiah was then dictating, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to you, Barak. You said, Woe to me! The Lord has added sorrow to my pain. I am worn out with groaning and find no rest. The Lord said, Say this to him. This is what the Lord says. I will overthrow what I have built and uproot what I have planted throughout the land. Should you then seek great things for yourself? Seek them not, for I will bring disaster on all people, declares the Lord. But wherever you go, I will let you escape with your life. Psalm 9 For the director of music, to the tune of The Death of the Sun, a Psalm of David. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. My enemies turn back. They stumble and perish before you. For you have upheld my right and my cause. You have sat on your throne, judging righteously. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. Endless ruin has overtaken the enemy. You have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them has perished. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He will judge the world in righteousness. He will govern the peoples with justice. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. 
Those who know your name will trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what he has done, for he who avenges blood remembers. He does not ignore the cry of the afflicted. O oh Lord, see how my enemies persecute me. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death, that I may declare your praises in the gates of the daughter of Zion, and there rejoice in your salvation. The nations have fallen into the pit they have dug. Their feet are caught in the net they have hidden. The Lord is known by his justice. The wicked are ensnared by the works of their hands. Higayan, Selah. The wicked return to the grave, all the nations that forget God, but the needy will not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the afflicted ever perish. Arise, O Lord, let not man triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, O Lord. Let the nations know they are but men. Selah.